Okay, so this is Kamehameha part three or four, I believe. Okay, so 1791, always under the control of Kamehameha. He has to think about how he's going to govern all those people now. He thinks back to something he'd done years ago, which was in his younger days, sailing along the coast of Puna, he had he'd been looking for a sacrifice, just anyone to sacrifice. And so he came across two fishermen and he called out to them, you know, hey, I want to talk to you, but they know what's going on. They can see who that is. And they start running away. And maybe he would have caught them, Things would have just gone on like normal, but he got his foot stuck in the lava rock. And as he was immobilized there, one of them rushed up and hit him over the head with a paddle so hard that the paddle splintered. It's like a wake-up call. It's like being hit over the head, right? You hear that expression? Um, as he thought back on that, he realized that what he had done was basically abuse his power, that chiefs are not given their responsibility and their authority to go around killing innocent Makainana. Right? So he creates the law of the splintered paddle, Kanavai Mamalahoe, which said, this is how it was worded, let the old men go and lie by the roadside, let the old women go and lie by the roadside, let the children go and lie by the roadside, and no one shall harm them. Old men, old women, children, who is he protecting? the weak, the vulnerable. And what is all this reference to roadside? What is he giving the people? Freedom. Freedom to travel. Right? Freedom of movement. So he's giving them freedom and What else? No one shall harm them. Safety, freedom, and security. And these two things are, are two things that every government, no matter where they are, every government has to balance those two things off against each other. Some governments emphasize freedom very strongly. Some emphasize security very strongly. The United States, which direction has it been leading since September 11, 2001? Security. Security. So you can see that. Things like the Patriot Act, where they can read your emails, they can tap your phone, no warrant, right? They call it the Patriot Act, really it's the Surveillance Act, but it's an emphasis on security to make sure that there's not another September 11. Other countries emphasize freedom, like what? Well, what countries? Canada. Canada is pretty free. What about countries where uh, marijuana is legal, prostitution is legal. Netherlands, yeah? Netherlands. Very strong emphasis on freedom. How about security? that really emphasize security. North Korea, China. Okay. And every country has their own idea about what is the right balance. Okay. This this law here is not some ancient history from 1791. This is a current event because the people down in Honolulu in the last couple of years, both houseless people and the Occupy Honolulu movement, you know what I'm talking about? There was Occupy Wall Street in 2011, uh, after 2008, when the banks basically robbed everybody, took all your grandparents' uh, retirement and just burned it up, basically stole it. 
and thousands and thousands of people marched in the street. That was Occupy Wall Street. They started to do it in every city in America and many, many, many cities across the world. The longest running one was Occupy Honolulu. And they would camp out at Thomas Square at the corner of Veritania and Ward. And every uh, few nights at like 4 o'clock in the morning, the police would come and raid them and harm them along the roadside, right on the side of the road. Why is that relevant? Because this law was incorporated into the law, the constitution of the state of Hawaii. It's not kingdom law, it's the state of Hawaii law in the state constitution. It's in section nine on public safety. And so they went to court saying, you guys are violating your own constitution with these midnight raids, which is not only occupied, but houseless people in their encampments, they, they come in and they seize all their stuff, take their stuff, basically steal it, um, did I just say that on YouTube? Oh, there you go. Okay. Meanwhile, on other islands, I'm going to come back to this map in a second. Kahikili dies. Now, Kahikili, it's important to remember, at this point, Kahikili controls all of that. This is what the map of Hawaii looks like right now. Okay, this is about 1792. Kahikili controls that. And the man controls that. And over here is Ka'eo Pulani. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. Well, 1790, it looks like this. Because Ke uh, Keo is still alive. Okay, so if I were to ask you in 1790, I would show you a map and say, who do you think is going to unify all the islands? You'd have to be crazy not to say Kahikili. Right? Would anybody in their right mind say it would be this one? No. So it's important to remember that sometimes what happens in history is the most unlikely thing. The most unlikely chief to unify is this one, right? It is the least amount of land. Kahikili was supposed to be the one to unify the islands, not from them. Okay, so at the time of his death, Kahikili, uh, Kamehameha got some more land, he got the rest of this. But still, it doesn't look like he's going to be the one. Um, Kahikili still controls all those islands at the time of his death. In fact, he dies on this island because he, he owns it. Um, there's a war between this chief that I just erased, Ka'eopulani, and Kahikili's son. And it's for who con who's going to control Oahu. Ka'eo dies, and Kahikili's son, Kalani Kukule, now controls those five islands that we call Nahono, Apihilani, the bays of Pihilani, which they would call Maui Kingdom, and we would now call Maui County is actually Maui Kingdom. Okay, that leads us to the Battle of Nuuanu, which um, is its own lecture in itself, so Take a break. Um, everybody stand up.